Good evening, First Baptist Oakboro Elementary peeps. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you have had a great evening so far. You've had a great week. I am excited tonight for our brief devotion and introduction to the next part of our series on emotions. So, for those of you that are just tuning in from the Towns Facebook broadcast, you had a, a quick switch over, which is good. Glad we're not able to. Uh, glad we're not having those both going at the same time. So, welcome if you're joining us from that broadcast. Uh, like I said, excited for this series that we're continuing on. The two weeks ago, we opened up with this series on depression and a lot of depression going around in COVID nineteen pandemic season and the previous week we talked about anxiety we brought out uh the fact that i'm still anxious about my onions and they're a little they're not growing anymore but you know what we talked about anxiety and i trust that god's got this and then i put my god thing uh instead of worrying about my onions which is my anxiety thing i put my god thing down which was just going to him and saying you know what god you're good enough to where i can just go to the grocery store and there's still onions on the shelves there. And they're probably a lot cheaper than what I could grow them for. So I went to God, and that was my God thing. I prayed to him, and I said, you know what? You've got this. So, but then, of course, we had a lot of other deeper issues. And tonight, we're going to talk about one of another one of those deeper issues. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the issue of doubt. Doubt and faith. So this is especially relevant for a lot of you elementary students tuning in today, and even a lot of you adults tuning in today, and then uh, everybody else as well. The reason it's so relevant is that because, well, Christianity is a faith. And in order to become a Christian, in order to partake in this faith, it involves stepping out on faith. And in order to do that for the first time, that means coming and saying, I can't do this on my own. I don't want to live life like this anymore. I take my step of faith to say that, Jesus, you are the one who can save me from my sins. You are the one that I need. I need your help. Come take over my life. I don't want to live like I'm living anymore. I want to live like you have me to live. That takes a step of faith. A lot of you haven't maybe done that yet. You haven't taken that initial step of faith into Christianity. Maybe you're still living in the other side of things. Maybe you're living in the side of doubt. You doubt what this thing is all about. You're not 100% convinced. Or maybe on the other side, maybe you do have faith. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you have accepted Christ as your Savior. You know exactly where you're going when you die. But that doesn't mean that you don't doubt things about the Bible also. That doesn't mean you don't doubt things about what Jesus said. That doesn't mean you don't doubt your relationship with God and how good it's going right now. You still have doubt about things in life about things about God, and about things that are you're going through each and every day. And even particular in the coronavirus pandemic, there's a lot of doubt. When are things going to get better? Are things going to get better? What if I'm not okay? God says he's going to take care of me. Uh, maybe I doubt that. God says things are going to be okay. I'm not so sure. God says this is not how the end comes. Uh, well, have you looked at the news lately? Have you looked at the, the world? There's a lot of doubt happening right now. So here's this week. We're going to be walking through Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. So if you had a copy of God's Word, digital or physical, break open that copy of God's Word and turn to Matthew chapter 17. Now, remember that this Facebook Live broadcast and starting next week, we're going to start streaming to YouTube Live as well, just like we've been doing on Sunday mornings. And we will be able to broadcast this. But then also, today we also got the Google form set up on Facebook so that your parents can go and type in their email address and their name. And they can have their email address added to a list. And we can send that devotion. Because remember, this is only half a Bible study. We can send the devotion that you and your family can do to that email address. So parents, if you're tuning in too, be sure, go check out the Facebook page. It just got posted today. The Bible study, for those of you who have an email, will be sent out tomorrow morning. And then later on tomorrow, the link to the website will be posted there as well. So if you want early access to the devotion, go sign up for that Google Doc. All right, to our devotional. 
here's what we're going to be talking about in the introduction. We're going to introduce you to the scriptures. And we're going to leave you hanging. We're going to leave you hanging on a question. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into that small group devotion. And then you're going to answer the question. So I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger. So get ready. Are you ready? All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read through the passage. Show you what your faith could look like right now in the time of the pandemic. And then we'll define faith and how this passage. But then the rest, we're leaving you in a cliffhanger for you to go to your small group devotion and look at it like that. All right, I'm going to open this up in a quick prayer. We'll look at the scripture. And then we'll talk about faith and leave you on that cliffhanger so you can go later for your devotion. God, you're awesome. God, I thank you for who you are. I ask that you would show us the faith that we can have. The faith that we can display in the middle of crazy times or even in the middle of regular times, in every time, that we can look at the issues of why it's so hard for us to have faith all the time. Give us help. Give us understanding. Show us what we're supposed to do. Show us and draw us closer to you. In your precious most holy name I pray. Amen. All right. Story time. You ready? Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they, the disciples and Jesus, came to a crowd, A man came up to him and said, kneeling before him and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. Remember, he's down on his knees. I'll go get on my knees for a dramatic effect. Get on his knees and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. Now, how many of y'all get on your knees to go beg for something that you really, really need often? Yeah. The only time you're probably going to get on your knees is when you really, really want something from your parents and you really want to cause a dramatic effect and you really want to be extra with it. And then you get it. Please, mom, please, dad. How many of y'all have done that before? Comment. Yeah, my videographer, Marissa, is in the background, has done that. You're on your knees. Please, mom, please, dad. I need this. Please, 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 please. All right, confession time over. Let's get on with the story. Lord, have mercy on my son. Please have mercy on my son. For he has seizures. Now, how many of y'all know what a seizure is? A seizure is when you lose control of your body and you start shaking and you can't control anything and it's really violent and it's bad. You don't want to have seizures. And he suffers terribly. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. He has seizures so bad, people can't control him and he falls into the oven. He falls into an open fire that's on the ground. He falls into the water. He falls into the river These are bad seizures. So you understand now why this person's on his knees asking God for help. Verse 16. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. See, Jesus' disciples and Jesus have had a reputation now that they can heal disease. Oh, seizures is a disease. But the thing is, he brought them to his disciples and they couldn't do it. So the disciples are like, we can't we can't do this. We, we, can't, we can't heal this person. And they're confused. Everybody's wondering what's up. So they go to Jesus, who's obviously the expert on the, on the area. And how does Jesus respond? Verse 17. And Jesus answered, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him. And the boy was healed instantly. So this demon was causing seizures, causing a medical illness that none of these disciples could get out. But Jesus says, get out of here. The thing is, he calls out the disciples first. So now the um, the father, his son's been healed. He can get off of his knees. He can take his son home. He's thanked Jesus. But then we still got the disciples to talk about. The disciples are still caught in a loop here. They have no clue what just happened. They have no clue why they couldn't throw the demon out of that body and get rid of him and cast him. Get on out of here, devil. They're confused. They got no clue what's going on. So, But then Jesus comes along and he just does it like it's nothing. And the disciples want to know, why in the world couldn't we do that? Let's read about that talk that they have with Jesus. Look at verse 19. The disciples came to Jesus privately. They didn't go publicly, and they didn't have a what-in-the-world moment in front of everybody. Because how many times have you failed at something, and you have no clue why you failed? You have no clue what happened, and then there's somebody that knows why you failed. Are you going to go up into a front of a crowd and say, why did I fail? 
or maybe why am I a loser or why am I how many of y'all felt like that before why am I a failure why couldn't I do this why the disciples are pretty probably depressed right now that they couldn't fix this they couldn't do anything with this so they're not going to go in front of the crowd to ask Jesus if he's uh what what happened they're going to go be like Jesus Jesus it, what what happened? Why 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 couldn't we? What do they say? Why could we not cast it out? You can probably imagine that they're kind of hunched over, looking a little bit like. So what gives, Jesus? Like, what happened? Verse twenty. Here's where your focus is going to be on for your small group devotion and for the rest of this Facebook Live broadcast. Here it is. He said to them. Because of your little faith. For truly, I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus says you have little faith. You have next to no faith to be able to tackle this. How? Now, he says that you should have faith. Like a mustard seed. Now, we have leftover seeds from our garden. These are not mustard seeds. These are green bean seeds. String beans. And as you can see, they are super tiny. They are super, super tiny. And they're not even that big. Like, now I have big hands and everything. But, these are small. So one of these things... It grows into a huge tree, but that's not the point Jesus is making. He's saying you should have the faith of something this small. Eventually, it's going to grow. Now, that you're going to talk about how it grows in your small group of There's part of your cliffhanger. See, it's not just about the growing part. And you're going to talk about that. We don't do the growing cliffhanger. So, go to your small group devotion. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Not going to answer it in the Facebook Live broadcast, so you're going to have to go look it up later. But Jesus is not immediately talking about the fact that, oh, a little seed will grow to be a big, giant tree. That's going to happen. That's part of what Jesus is getting at. But the thing is, he didn't say, have the faith of a mustard tree. He didn't say, have the faith of all the crops that you're going to get off of this mustard tree. He said, have the faith of the little, itty, bitty, tiny seed. And the mustard seed is about a tenth the size of this little seed that I have right here. Super, super, super small. So here's what Jesus is saying. Right now, your faith is practically nothing. You practically have no faith going on in your life. See, your mustard seed faith is not there. And if you don't even have the faith of a tiny, itty-bitty, itty-bitty mustard seed, can it really even be said that you have faith at all? Look at verse 17. What's one of the things that Jesus calls the disciples? And Jesus answered, Oh, faithless. No faith. Jesus is saying, You have such a little amount of faith. It's less than the size of a mustard seed. But if you get the size of the faith of a mustard seed, that's when you can move mountains. So what is faith? How do I get it? Well, of course, faith, an easy definition is believing in things that you can't see or 100% prove. Now, we can't 100% prove the existence of God scientifically. That's why we call it a faith. Because we can't see God. We can see the effects of God. We can kind of uh, show things that lead up to him. But we cannot 100% prove in a scientific laboratory, that God is real. Now, flip side of that is that people can't prove that God is not real, but the fact remains, there is faith. Now, if faith is believing in things that you can't see, if I believe in things that I can't see, that's going to lead me to believe in those things and put my trust in them, put my hope in them, and I'm going to be able to jump off mountains and do whatever and have an awesome time And that's not going to leave any room for doubt to creep in and say, is this really going to happen? 
because my faith is there to fill that gap. But the thing is, a mustard seed doesn't fill a, fill a very big gap. A mustard seed doesn't actually fill a lot of space. It's smaller than this little tiny seed right here. This tiny seed doesn't even fit. It's not even the size of my pinky tip. And a mustard seed is about a tenth the size of, the size of this? No. So how is my faith going to fill up a giant void to where I'm not like these disciples and it leaves no room for doubt? How does that happen? You'll have to download the small group devotion to find out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. Here's what I want you to do. Go get that devotion. Go look through it with your family. Talk through it as a group. And then I want you to ask the question, how does the faith of a mustard seed fill up that giant void that doubt likes to come in and take over. I'm going to pray. Be sure to tune in this Thursday. Go sign up for the Google Doc. If you sign up for the Google Doc, you'll get that uh, document early before everybody else. And then tomorrow afternoon, it'll be posted on the church website for you to be able to look at and go through with your family. But ask yourself that question. What is the faith of a mustard seed? How does that fill all this void in my life to where it kicks all the doubt out? Let me pray. God, I come to you today thankful for your love, thankful for who you are. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the advancements that you're doing in our community. Just even as this pandemic is going on, I thank you for the advancement in our church even as this pandemic is going on. I thank you for the technology that allows us to have these advancements. I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you give us faith the size of a mustard seed so that it can somehow, as we'll find out later, fill the void up to where it kicks all of doubt out. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love. In your precious most holy name I pray. Amen. All right, peeps. I'll see most of y'all Thursday night on the Zoom devotion call. Be sure to go get that devotion. Tune in uh, next week. We'll be broadcasting on YouTube Live and Facebook at the same time. And may have a little special effects going on. We'll have to see what kind of creativity we can get going on for next week's lesson. But until then, love y'all. See y'all later.